Welcome to Tech Talk Tuesday, brought to you by Idaho Public Television and Montana PBS. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Tech Talk Tuesday. Uh, I'm Carrie Wardle, as you know, from Idaho Public Television, and I have my friend Nikki here. I always like want to point, but um, so anyway, where whatever direction she is on your screen, she's here. We're excited this week, this month, to talk the whole month of November about collaboration. Nikki and I are both um, really, I mean, obviously we're tech nerds, but we're also really big on collaboration in the classroom and letting kids have that collaborative shared space to work. I really think that's where the magic happens is when we start letting kids go together. And so we're excited this month to talk about some collaborative digital tools that you can use in the classroom um, or not, you know, if you're teaching virtually as well. Um, and so we're going to start off by talking about learning media. Share my screen. Nikki, can you see that? So one of the first collaborative tools um, that we're gonna talk about are interactive lessons on PBS Learning Media. But first, if you don't know what PBS Learning Media is, I'm sorry that you are missing out. PBS Learning Media is a free resource for teachers in uh, across the nation to use. You can see that I have it on my screen here. Um, it's a whole bunch of curated resources. And as you can see, they're aligned to standards. Um, and if you sign up, for an account, which is free and has single sign on with Google, um, then it aligns also to your state standards. So every resource is aligned to state or national standards. You'll see that there's a bunch of different um, resources here. You can filter out by subject. You can filter by grade level. There's kind of always one every day that is what they feature for each of the subjects. Um, and then as you scroll down, hey, look at that, Tech Talk Tuesday with, Mon with Idaho and Montana. You can put um, various news and events. These are controlled by the local station, so they might be applicable to you. And then um, there's also collections. Now, we're not going to spend a lot of time on learning media. We do have a Tech Talk about that, I believe. Um, but I did just want to give you a brief, uh, really quick, here's what it is. If you don't know, you should go to pbslearningmedia.org and find it, it's a really great resource. So we're gonna look at interactive lessons, which is one, one type of resource on learning media um, that are quickly becoming some of the most used resources um, on learning media. And I'm gonna get to those, I mean, there's a variety of ways, but if I wanted to look at all of the interactive lessons that are available, they're in a collection. So collections on learning media are what I think of sort of like unto units. Um, it will be an entire collection of materials around the same thing. And then within that, you'll have multiple resources. I'm just gonna type in interactive lessons in the search bar here. And you'll see that the first result that comes up um, is this collection of interactive lessons. And you can quickly tell right here that there's 225 of them. But what also comes up are some tutorials about how to use them, um, which might be useful for you as well. So uh, I'm gonna click on this interactive lessons. So this is the, the overall collection. Um, and you'll see that it's broken down into subject area. And if you click on any one of these subjects, so I'm gonna go to English language arts, it then goes further, um, filters down further into grade level band. Um, and so interactive lessons are sort of what they sound like. They're designed, well, a couple of different ways, and we're gonna give you some examples of those, but they're really designed that students could potentially you could assign this to them. They could work through it on their own. Um, everything is built right into that lesson. So there is some often some annotating that students could do or typing. Um, there's a variety of different ways that this can be used. And so we're gonna talk about those and share, um, share a little bit more in depth with you. But I would say also, this is a, an area that if you really love these, you should keep checking back because 
Um, stations are creating content and adding to this all the time. My team has just learned how to create these. And so some Idaho um, interactive lessons will be coming soon. Um, and so don't just come one time and think that's all there is because people are adding to them. They're continuing to create content for these. And like I said, they have really become a useful resource, especially when students were home during COVID and teachers needed them to have kind of self-paced um, resources. Um, so that's the general, uh, obviously you can look at any, like here's all the math ones. Um, and so as you go through this, you can look at those resources and, and kind of go through them and check them out. Yeah, so I can just, you can keep sharing. Sure, stop. Um, okay. Yeah, you can keep sharing and I'll have you just point to things. So you might have noticed uh, the Google Classroom emblem is, is here. And so that is one of the great things about interactive lessons is there are a lot of ways to share them with students. So Carrie, will you open up just one of the lessons, maybe the storytelling with words and pictures lesson? Um, or this one, this is the one our station made. So <laughs> we can open that one up too. So when we look at this one, you'll see that this is a resource and it looks like any other resource on PBS Learning Media. It has the uh, lesson plan on the side and support materials and it has any handouts that need to go along with it. We recommend that you read those before assigning the lesson and give it, give it a couple reads to make sure you understand what kids are supposed to do and then what your role as a teacher would be in, in figuring out what they create and how you teach the lesson. But you'll notice that there is a Google Classroom icon in the corner there, which means you can share this lesson with your students using Google Classroom. That means that you would be able to create an assignment within Google Classroom directly here on learning from here on learning media. And then the students assigned when they were assigned it, they would click on a link that would take them to the interactive lesson. They would do the work within the interactive lesson and their results, their work would live here on learning media. And you as a teacher can come in and look at it. Um, but you can quickly share the link to this lesson with them using Google Classroom. Another great thing about the interactive lessons, well, let's, let's take a look at one. So um, let's launch this one, Carrie, and we'll show you what this looks like. And so these um, are created that is just a series of media um, videos and pictures and then tasks for students to do. And you'll see at the top here, um, it's organized by pages with that little yellow circle um, being the way that they can navigate from one page to the other. So think of it like a digital workbook. So this is a lesson for fourth graders about Charlie Russell, famous Montana cowboy artist. The first thing they do here is um, read a little bit about Charlie Russell and head over to the next page. On the second page, they have to type something in this text box and press the save button. All of their work will be saved in that my work section up there and they can go back and look at the work that they have submitted. They can go back and forth between these pages and do things in any order, although to get the most out of the lesson, we recommend they do everything in order. But as you're teaching kids, um, you can show them how to jump around using the menu button. Um, this particular lesson uses a few of the tools that are in the interactive lesson. Um, in this one, they watch a movie or they watch a quick video and then they move to the next page and they need to, they watch another clip and then they enter text with a response to a prompt. Um, in the next one, I think they, um, I think if you scroll down on this one, well, it looks like you did something here. We'll clear and restart. You might have started that one as an example. And this one, it's called a visualize it. And so this is a, a tool within the lesson. Um, and so on this one, they need to use annotation tools to circle something on the painting. So for this one, it's um, to identify the places on the painting that tell somebody that this was a hard winter, whereas the evidence that this was a hard winter. And so they can use those annotation tools to, to write over top of this picture. And then their work is saved within this system. And you as a teacher can go back and look at their work. 
So, all right, Carrie, do interactive one. lessons. As you'll notice, they do have lessons for lot, all different age groups. They probably have the most for older kids, but there is a nice collection of them for younger kids. Um, understanding behind these lessons are they're supposed to be self-paced and independent, that these would be assigned to students. And students would work together on their own device or maybe even with a partner on a shared device to do to work through the lesson. But another way that these lessons could be used is to do it in a small group where the teacher leads the lesson or to do it in a whole group where the teacher leads the lesson, uh, projecting the lesson elements on a whiteboard or a smart board, and then leading the students through the prompts in the lesson. So, um, and there are some really great lesson prompts in the teaching tips for how this might work in your classroom. So for this one, the teacher might read this text out loud to a group of students and play the video and then lead the students through watching this video and talking about it. And then on this one, you'll see there's an arrange an activity. And so we would maybe bring kids up to an interactive whiteboard or up to the projector and have them drag these tiles into this graphic organizer um, just like this. And I realize I got all of those wrong, but I wasn't even looking at them. But this is an example of a teacher guided activity um, with a small group or a large group that would make this uh, a valuable experience for our younger students. You, you, a lot of them are geared really to that older, kind of older than third grade. Um, and, and I, you know, the nature of that is obviously that, like Nikki said, sort of they're designed to be sort of self-paced. And so that kind of lends itself to a little bit older kids. But I will tell you that, um, one way that I know of and that, that if I had known these existed when I was a teacher that I would have loved, um, there's a really great collection called Inspiring Middle School Literacy, actually. And um, it uh, there are, I think within that collection, uh, there's they're all interactive lessons. And I think there's like 25 or 30 of them. And I know of teachers and I personally would have loved to have used them for um, end of the year state testing prep. Um, and, and I know that that's not the end all be all, but in Idaho, at least, our kids test on the computer and they do many of the things that are in these interactive lessons where they have to, they might watch a video and take some notes on it. Um, they might uh, have to highlight on the screen and annotate something. Um, and it would ask them to, you know, read an article and highlight the main points or things like that. And sometimes kids, especially in those younger third, fourth level, especially third, because they've never taken in Idaho, um, kids don't take the state test until third grade. Um, they have a different test at a younger age. But um, so I think that doing one or two of these a week is a really great way to not only teach the kids those obviously critical skills about for example, character change, like this one here, the diary of Anne Frank, but it also gives them that real, um, that experience of navigating through something on their own and doing the work within, um, within the, you know, typing on a computer, highlighting on a computer, um, all of those kinds of tools. And then again, um, it's self-paced. So this particular one is Anne Frank, but Again, you'll notice that, you know, this is very similar to how things appear, at least on our state test. So here's vocabulary. Kids can click on that. It pops up a screen that has the words. And so using this to, to tell students, like, look at that. When you notice that it's a different color, that usually means there's the hyperlink, right? So it's more than just the content, which obviously is really important, but it's also I think these could also be a really great tool in teaching kids how to be digital literate, digitally literate, right? And using those things like this is a hyperlink, click on it, um, and how to um, enter text and all of those things and, and see how you can see again here right within the text. Again, if you click on that, it pops up a definition. And so getting kids used to doing that and navigating digital text um, 
kids may or may not always notice that and know that they can click on that. And so showing them all of those things, I think can be a really beneficial thing as well. So I love these because I feel like they sort of serve a twofold um, purpose where you can teach the content, but you can also use it to teach kids how to sort of navigate through digital media. Yeah, it's a twofer. I love that. Yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> and just like all the things on learning media, you can assign these and have kids use them directly from this site without any uh, worry about ads popping up or content that isn't appropriate for them. Um, they can they work right within this site and there's no need to toggle out of it. Um, everything would be right there on the screen for them to use. And so I think that's an advantage. It is compatible with Google. And I love that because if you're already using Google, so your kids already have, they don't have to have another username and password. And I know that when you're working with elementary kids, um, probably any kid, actually, I have a bajillion usernames and passwords and it gets hard to manage them all. So mm -hmm. they, they wouldn't have to have another username and password. It's just pretty easy integration. And in fact, you could just import them from your Google Classroom list and, um, and it would be pretty seamless for them. So mm -hmm. and the other, uh, there, one of the great things about this as well, and this is a fairly new feature, but, um, that these interactive lessons have is not just content for kids, but there's also some professional development stuff on here. And so you'll notice the very last tab is teacher tutorials and professional development. And, um, Look at that. One of them is to use it is how to use interactive lessons in your classroom. So it is an interactive lesson on using interactive lessons. And um, you can get certificates at the end of these that that generate how much um, like a certificate if you want it for CEUs or renewal credits. Um, and so these are some tutorials that were designed. And then here are professional development lessons. You'll see that right now there's about 17. Um, and again, this is one of those things that I would say continue checking back because I know that stations are, we're working on some professional development content for this site. And I know that other stations are as well. So in addition to really great content for your students, um, here's some great stuff like how to teach about the solar system and some great interactive lessons for teachers um, and by the way, these grade level bands are typically um, what you would apply this content to, like if you're a third through fifth grade teacher, but, oh, I don't know what just happened. Oh, I clicked on one. Look at that, understanding the engineering design process. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to show you that as well. And, oh, look, I talked about the inspiring middle school literacy and here's some tutorials on those. So um, this is some great content as well for you, not just for students. So check out the professional development part of the interactive lessons also. All right, well, that's it for Tech Talk Tuesday this week. Hope you will were inspired to check out some PBS interactive lessons. And if you wanna learn more about these lessons, you please feel free to reach out to me or Carrie, and we'd be more than happy to help you get started with them. Thanks everybody.